Hi, it's Ryan from Knights Around a Table. Seven Wonders Duel is a set collecting card game for two players. Let me show you how to play. During the game you lay out these building cards in three different configurations or ages. You and your opponent take turns buying these buildings and putting them in a city tableau in front of you. There are three ways to win. Once all of the cards in the third age have been exhausted, you count up all the points inside the laurel leaf symbols you've collected. The highest scoring player wins. The second way to win is to push this conflict pawn all the way to your opponent's end of the board. The marker moves one space for every shield you collect. And the third way to win is to collect any six unique science symbols. Military and science victories end the game immediately, even if there are still buildings on the table that haven't been constructed. Here's how to play the game. Choose the first player randomly. You each start the game with seven coins. Hand out the wonders according to the draft method or beginner setup in the rule book. You'll both end up with four wonders, which are costly cards that can give you a super-powered advantage over your opponent. On your turn, you have three options. Buy a building card and add it to your city. For example, the stone pit costs one coin and lets your city produce one stone. On a future turn, you could afford this baths card, which costs one stone, because your civilization now produces that resource. Once you own this stone gathering stone pit, it stays in your city. You don't have to cash it in to buy the baths. The stone pit generates one stone every turn, but that total doesn't carry over to future turns. You can't store unused stone until later. This card is good for one stone only on every turn. These walls cost two stone, but your city only produces one stone. You can buy the extra stone that you need for two coins, plus one coin for every stone that your opponent's city produces. Uh-oh. Your opponent's city produces three stone. Only the brown and gray resource buildings matter when you're tallying the cost, so you can ignore the stone that your opponent's yellow building generates. Still, it's bad news. It means that every stone you need to purchase to make up a shortfall costs you two coins plus another three coins. That's five coins for every stone you lack. Even though it's called trading, the money goes into the shared resource pile, not to your opponent. Either way, trading for resources like this can get really expensive. Thankfully, some yellow buildings, like this customs house, allow you to buy extra resources for only one coin apiece, ignoring the usual trading costs. But be careful, this building doesn't actually produce any resources. It only makes trading more affordable. Some buildings have a little linkage symbol at the top. If you own a building with one of these symbols, you can buy a future building for free if it has the same symbol. The rule book has a handy map of all these linkages. If you build a card that uncovers other cards, flip them over. You can only build cards that aren't blocked by other cards. The second thing you can do on your turn is discard a building on the table to turn it into money. Any card you discard is worth two coins. You get one additional coin for each yellow building in your city. The third and final thing you can do on your turn is construct a wonder. Make sure you can afford the steep cost and then take a building card from the table and slide it under your wonder to construct it. Wonders give you all kinds of powers, like causing your opponent to destroy a building, giving you points and gold and military might, and giving you an extra turn. Once a player builds the seventh wonder in the game, the eighth wonder goes back in the box and can't be constructed. The game's called Seven Wonders. What are you trying to pull with this eighth wonder insanity, you maniac? Whenever you buy a building with one or more shields on it, you push the conflict pawn one step closer to your opponent's end of the board. The first time you push the pawn into these zones, you discard the chit and force your opponent to lose money. Two coins in this zone, and five coins in this one. Remember, if you drive the pawn all the way to your opponent's end of the board, you win the game. If you collect two identical science symbols, you earn one of these progress tokens at the top of the board, which are dealt out randomly at the beginning of the game. The tokens give you special powers, which are described in the game manual. Remember, if you collect six unique science symbols, you win the game. The cards for the three ages are dealt out in different configurations. The first age looks like this, the second age looks like this, and the third age looks like this. Before dealing out the cards for an age, toss three random cards from that age into the box so that nobody can know for sure what's going to be on the table. In the third age, replace those three cards with three random guild cards. 
The guild cards allow you to earn points at the end of the game for the city that has the most wonders, the most coins, the most buildings of a certain color, even if you don't control the city that that guild card describes. It's a great way to piggyback on your opponent's successes. When the last card in the Third Age is exhausted, count up the points from your buildings, guilds, wonders, progress tokens, coins, and military zones to see who's won. Well, then shuffle it all up and play again, because Seven Wonders Duel is a fast, fun game that's definitely worthy of your time and attention.